Okay, great. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. I think you've all seen the, the first screen. I'm not sure if you have, actually. So I might just go back to the first screen and uh, show you what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be giving you some very practical strategies and telling you what English through drama really means. A lot of people don't understand what I mean by that. So I'm going to be explaining it to you. I'm going to be explaining why I developed my personal pedagogy and the benefits both of my ideas offer to students and teachers. I have found that um, in my 50 years of teaching all over the world, that drama really works. It really is magic. And I'm going to show you the components of drama as described here in my book and what classroom management techniques you need to develop in order to be able to do drama in your classrooms. The thing is that a lot of teachers like to have their students in rows sitting quietly and it doesn't work because in if you're teaching a language you've got to teach real communication and drama gives you a fantastic number of tools to do that and i believe personally that every teacher in the world should be trained to use drama in their language classrooms I'm going to tell you a little bit about the theory, but not very much. And you're going to leave with a clear idea of the difference between drama and theatre. And I think this is the first step to understanding what I mean by English through drama. You'll be able to try out the activities in your classrooms immediately, if you can remember them. I hope you're ready to participate and to interact. If you are, could you please write the word yes in the chat box? Yes, oh yes, 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 yes. Okay, I'm thrilled, that's really great. My cursor is getting stuck. Okay, here are the questions for today. What is drama? What are the essential components of drama? Who is drama for? How is drama different from theater? What different classroom management skills do you need in order to change the dynamics of your classroom so that your classrooms become more drama-ified? And how do we implement this drama in our language learning classrooms? Because one thing is to know about it, Another thing is to be able to do it. So I'm going to start off by doing some with you. So I'm going to explain a little bit first, and then I'm going to talk to you about my personal pedagogy, and I'm going to do it with you. So I'm going to start off basically with some drama. So. The drama that I devised in my first, very, very first job in my first school in Coventry in England, I was just out of university. I'm a trained educational dramatist. And I went into a school in Coventry teaching remedial students. Those are students who have learning difficulties, but not such severe learning difficulties as to be put into a special school. I had to teach them English language because none of them could read or write in English. They were 13, 14 years of age. And I found that it was very, very difficult. I had 18 remedial students from 11 different countries sorry, seven different countries with 11 languages between them. And they came from all different cultures, all different religions, and they couldn't read or write in English. Some of them could already speak because they were born in England, but I had to teach them everything. I decided 
that the only thing out of the four subjects I was teaching them, I was teaching them geography, maths, English language, and drama. Drama was a subject in those days. And I realized that I couldn't reach them. I just could not get through to them. So I said to myself, nobody's going to help you work it out yourself. I've always been very daring and very proactive. So I realized that out of the four subjects, the one subject that really did get a little bit closer to them was drama. So I said, okay, what is it about drama that appeals to them? What is it that helps them be reachable? So I did a big analysis. I went back to my gurus and I read some more books about it. And I discovered that there were two things mainly in drama that made them reachable. And that was multi-sensory education using sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch, and what I call the spice. You have a lot of different students in your classrooms. And some of you I know have very large classes. And so drama works for everybody. It works for any age, any ability, any level, and any religion, and any creed or color. So we can do it with everybody. Why it, why it works is that many of your students in your classrooms have different learning styles. I know that some people say that learning styles are quasi science, but I have seen it with my very eyes. I appeal to my students who like to learn through looking, who, like, who are visual students. I appeal to my students who like to learn by listening and reading. I appeal to my students' hearts and souls by making it move, making it move on the inside and on the outside. So as you all said yes to me, that you're going to participate, can I ask you please to stand up and I'm going to be doing the spice with you. The spice is something that I have used all my years in teaching, as I'm going further back so that you can see what I'm doing. I have been in teaching for 50 years and I have been working in 17 different countries in lots of different ways, conference speaker, course uh, facilitator, researcher, consultant, and I have seen that this works with everybody. So let's hear if you believe me. We're going to take our pointing finger on our writing hand. So take your pointing finger. I hope you're all standing up with me or I'm going to feel very silly. And I want you to look at the nail on the end of your pointing finger. And I want you to keep your vision fixed on that nail because we're going to do a strategy called air streaming. And I'm going to teach you what the acronym SPICE really means through doing it. This is drama. We are doing the concept. We're not just talking about this concept or listening to somebody talk about the concept. So look at your nail, have your hard work pointing finger pointing right up to the ceiling. I don't want any lazy fingers down here. I want hard work pointing fingers so you're stretching your body. And I want you to look at your nail and I want you to make a big capital S in the air from the ceiling to the floor, and I want you to be snakes today. I want you to say, ready, steady, go. Stir for what? What do you think it stands for? Write in the chat box for me. Tell me what you think it stands for. Space, okay, that's a good idea, but it's not what I mean. Anything else, any other S? Sound, sound drills, could be senses, sight, sway, special. 
All right, we're getting lots and lots of things here. Stars, yes, signals, stretch, okay, great. I'll tell you what it means in my understanding of it. It means social development. What we're doing is working on the student's social development. In drama, we don't keep them sitting at individual desks. We don't keep them sitting, working with their individual brain and their individual heart and their individual soul, wherever your soul resides. We get them working in pairs. We get them working in groups. We get them working in ensembles, as we call them, which is the whole class working together doing drama. So people talk about cell, social, and emotional learning. But I never talked about that because I always did it as part of the drama in my spice. So S for social development. Now we're going to airstream the P. Okay, ready, we're gonna say plosive P. P. Ready and hard work pointing finger, looking at your nail, don't take your eyes off your nail. We're gonna do Nice big P in the air. What do you think P with P? PH stands for. What do you think it stands for? Can you guess? PH. PH. Participation. Personal. Personalized. Physical development. I don't know who it was who said that, but yes, excellent. Physical development. So S stands for social. P stands for physical. Now we're going to go on to the I. And we're going to raise our hard work pointing finger to the ceiling. And we're going to say, if, 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 ready, steady, go. If, 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 for, hmm, let's have your guesses. Imagination, yes, drama uses imagination, but that's not what I'm thinking of here. Interaction, identical involvement, wow, interactivity, wonderful. Somebody said intellectual, thank you. Whoever it was who said intellectual, yes. We have to underpin every single thing we do in our language classes with some kind of thinking. And if we can go through Bloom's taxonomy and get to the top, of Bloom's taxonomy, then we are really working. Within intellectual, I like internalizing as well. Within intellectual, I am also including the arts. Very, very important to include the arts in all of our language classes. Otherwise, it is bare and we are not talking about culture, culture from our country, from other countries, we're not talking about the things that matter to human beings. Yes, the, the recordings are going to be made available. You're going to get uh, an email after this and the recordings are going to be made available. They have to render yet. Okay, so we've done SPI. Now we're going to do K. Okay, a nice hard work pointing finger, looking at your nail and ready, steady, go. Great. Cut for wow, yes, you've got it. Creativity, communication, yes, fabulous. For me, it's creativity. Some students just cannot learn a language, any language, I'm not talking just about English, any language, if you don't do creative activities with them. And my understanding of drama is that it's the use of imagination in practice, and that is called creativity. So drama is pure creativity. Okay, now we go to our last letter. I hope you're learning this because I'm going to test you in a minute. Ready, steady, go. E, E, 
y, 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 for emotional, thank you, empathy, expression. Wow, I could do a lot more on the spice than I do, couldn't I? Thank you for your great ideas. That is wonderful. Okay, let's go back to multisensory. When we're looking at multisensory, we're looking at the use of the senses. And what we have just done is use vision because we were looking at the trace of the letter as we did it with our finger, sight. We did hearing because we made the sounds of those letters. And we did touch or kinesthetic learning because we were moving the whole body. I could have asked you to do it here on your seat, but that's not drama. Drama demands that you get the students out of their seats and moving. Now I'm going to test you. What does E stand for? Can you write it in the chat box? What does E stand for? Emotional, energy, intellectual, no. E stands for emotional development. We use the feelings in drama all the time and we bring in their emotions and we have them understand other people's emotions into the bargain. It means that they can learn about themselves they can learn to control themselves and they can learn to understand other people's emotions. S, what does S stand for? In my spice I'm talking about. Social development, thank you very, very much, Angela. Yes, social development. What does I stand for? I for intellectual, right. The arts and thinking skills, critical thinking, creative thinking, 21st century skills, basically. And the, the P with the H, P with H, physical development, perfect. And last one, C for creativity. Great. Thank you very much indeed. That's fantastic. So we're now going to, we've just done some drama. I got you up out of your seats, I hope. And I got you moving, I got you thinking, I got you guessing, I got you hearing, seeing, and moved on the inside because probably many of you enjoyed it as your students do always enjoy drama. Okay, I want to move on now, if I can. So what is drama? Oh, I did explain to you why my pedagogy was developed in my school. And this is something that I carried on doing all my life. And I have always tried to explain to people what drama is, because as an educational dramatist, I have a different view of drama as being something which is these four things active role-taking situations. So students have to take on different roles. What role did we just take on when we were doing that drama? What role was it? If we weren't being doctors. What were we being? Can anybody tell me in the chat box? I wonder if you can. Method and art, we were being artists. We were being students. We were being instructors as well. We were doing situational learning, exactly. We were being teachers, great. So we all took on a different role from, from being somebody sitting, listening to and watching a webinar. So we have to change what they do, what they say. Drama is lived at life rate. It's about life itself and it's lived at life rate. We do it, we don't talk about it. 
we obey the natural laws of the medium. And I would need much longer than this webinar to explain what the natural laws of the medium are, but I've already explained that they are the spice and they are multisensory education. Story through action, very good, doctor. Very nice, yes. In drama, we can do stories through action for the rest of our lives. And drama is about attitudes, not characters. And this is why drama is different from theater. Because theater is mainly to do with students reading a play. I'm not moving on. I'm stuck. Here we are. What's the difference between drama and theater? This is really important. Theater is the work of writing, producing, and acting in plays. So you have to have a play, you have to have a script. For drama, you don't have any script. Scripts aren't, aren't used in my drama, scripts aren't used. My drama is spontaneous or planned improvisation. So we don't have any scripts. Specialist actors on the stage rehearse a script for a given period of time. We don't really do any rehearsing in drama. We do it in the classroom and we don't use a lot of time. Many teachers say to me, oh, I have too much to do. I can't possibly get through the syllabus and do drama. That's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is keep the text. If you've got to do a comprehension, change the task. So you follow the book, you follow the texts in your textbook, but you do different things with the students. And these are the different things that you can do with them. You can do, you can teach spelling through air streaming, like we did the spice. I use it in a different way but you can use it for lots and lots of different things. In the theater, you have a director. So you have a writer, you have actors, you have a director, and the director gives instructions to the actors. And his instructions are all to do with the objective of pleasing and entertaining or educating an audience. It is a pure art form and as such, it takes a long time. I'm not asking you to do theater. I'm asking you to do drama. The objectives of drama are, and this is different from theater, to create a living, moving picture of life, living. So the bodies in the classroom actually live the situation. They live the event or they live the attitudes of the person they are portraying. It aims at surprise and discovery for the participants rather than for any onlookers. So we don't have an audience in drama. We do it with the objective of helping them to learn who they are and learn the English language into the bargain and it's natural. We use natural situations for them to learn the language and become fluent. There are certain laws of the medium. The students have to agree to pretend. They have to have a willing suspension of disbelief. If somebody isn't willing to pretend, your drama goes out the window. It breaks down. So you have to train them. And I use the word train on purpose. I don't like it, but we have to teach, train the students how to do drama because it's very different from anything else they've ever done in the classroom before. They have to employ all past experiences. So we're not asking them to learn something off by heart. We're not asking them to use facts we're asking them to use their experiences. And these are the kind of things we do with them. We ask them to play. 
as they played when they were young children. Think about babies. They were born to play. And when they play, they learn. And this is how you learn so much more in the first three years of your life than you ever do after that. So let, let us bring play back into the classroom and let us, yes, express their experiences. So let us do that. Let us do it not only with kindergarten, but with primary, with secondary, with adults. And yes, exactly, Danya. She always says that we can teach in fun ways and she knows it really works. I call it serious fun. Serious fun because some people think it's a waste of time. It's never a waste of time. And they employ any conjecture of imagination. There we go. Now we've had the theory and now we're going to go on to the components. Very, very important that you teach your students to breathe well. They are going to have to use their voices in the classroom and to use their voices, to speak the language, to think well, they need to breathe well. And so you need to teach breathing exercises. I did my breathing exercises before I came here today. I'm just winding my blinds back because the sun's gone in here in Argentina. Okay, so you need to teach them to limber up the body like, like athletes do, like footballers do. You have to teach them to practice mime, to go with meaning. Mime and meaning is natural to the human being, but we can tend to say, sit down, sit still, don't move. And all of those things mitigate learning the language. We have to limber up the voice and their pronunciation. We have to teach them to concentrate and listen. We have to use warmers, stirrers, energizers, settlers to get them in the right mood, to get them off their seats and moving. And lots and lots of fluency games and role plays. So, Let's do some. All of the exercises that I'm doing with you now today, and I'm going to intersperse the exercises with some more ideas of the theory of drama, but really I've finished the theory. I'm just going to give you some more hints as we go along. All of these exercises are in my book. So we're going to start off with a breathing exercise. This is called Breathe Out the Sound. So I want you all to think of a vowel, a vowel sound in English. And I want you to breathe with me. And when I say vowel, I want you loudly, as loudly as your location will allow you, I want you to say your vowel loudly to the count of eight on the exhale. So we inhale to eight, and then we exhale the vowel. So you are moving the muscles of your mouth, your tongue, your teeth, and you are saying a sound. I don't mind beginning my first English lesson with a new group with doing utterances. I think utterances are vital because I suppose many of you are in the situation where your students don't want to open their mouths. How can we teach a language if they don't want to open their mouths? So we have to start from the very first lesson with utterances, making noises. Okay, so hands on your belly, because we're going to do some belly breathing. This is breathing right down into the belly, not just to here. And we're going to keep our shoulders down, keep our heads up, looking forward, and we're going to open our feet to about the same width as our shoulders. Okay, ready, and in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Vowel sound. Ah. Uh... Okay. 
That's just one breathing exercise. I have lots more to offer you. Always start your classes with breathing and do something with the body. When we stand up and we breathe, we're already getting them out of their seats. I'm going to do an exercise with you called, there's a monster on the roof. So I want you to put your hands in front of you and I want you to clasp them and stretch to the front as far as you can go without falling over. Remembering to do your breathing, please. And take your hands in a nice wide circle, go to the back, push back, push back, push back as far as you can. And now put your hands in front of you with your fingers spread like this. And I want you to use your imagination. Imagine there's a monster on your roof. He's got six little mini monsters, clones of him, running around on the roof. They've all got glue and they're throwing down great globs of glue onto your hands. Picture that monster on the roof and your hands are going up. And now the monster and his little clothes have all run down into the basement. And your hands are going down, down, down. You're stuck to the monster, down, down, down. Okay, now you're all stretched. You've been doing your breathing. You've done some imagination. And now I want to ask you to write in the chat box, please, what color is your monster and his little clones. Blue, orange, green, purple, green, purple, green, 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 brown, greenish, <laughs> black, ooh, black monster, green, black. Okay, so you can always add in a, a rainbow monster. <gasps> Doctor, that's the first time I have ever had a rainbow monster in my life. What a brilliant idea. You see how your imaginations work. A white monster, a pink monster. We all did the same exercise, but you all use your imagination in a different way. This is wonderful. Okay, I'm going to ask you to sit down now because we're on Zoom and I want to do a little mime exercise with you. I'm going to make it short because I've got lots more to do with you today. And my time is going. The teachers cry, isn't it? Teachers will cry. I have no time. Okay, so who likes sweets? Does anybody like sweets? Tell me in the chat box. Do you like sweets? Do you like eating sweet things? <laughs> Yes, 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 a lot. Okay. Don't want to make you hungry, but I've got a big bag of toffees here and I'm going to throw everyone in this group a toffee. Are you ready to catch it? Hold your hands like this so you can be ready to catch it. You want one, you're getting one. Okay. So here's my toffees. I'm going to throw them to you now. Ready to catch, ready, steady, throw. Throwing them out to all over the world. Up, back, over, down. You got it. Great. Okay. Now, oh, you got more than one, did you? <laughs> Great. Okay. Can't eat it yet. Can't eat it yet because we've got to do something with it. Okay. Open your toffee, please. And before you open it, tell me what colour the paper is on your toffee. These are, oh, golden, white, brown, blue, brown. All the colors again. Is, is Doctor going to have a rainbow color <laughs> paper? Okay, wonderful. Toffees come with a certain kind of consistency. What kind of word would you use to describe a toffee? Sticky, right, they're sticky, aren't they? 
So that's why they often have golden paper or silver paper, because it doesn't stick to them. They're soft, they're like caramel, they're gooey, yummy, great, sweet, yes. Okay, so now I want you to take your toffee and I want you to pop it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, sticking to your teeth. Mm. Okay. Mm. Ah. Can you get it out of your teeth? See if you can get it out, with, out of your teeth with your tongue. Mm. Okay. Mm. What does your toffee taste like? Has it got any other flavor in it? Is it a strawberry? Oh, yours is a chocolate, chocolate orange coffee. A coffee, salty, milky, nutty. Okay, great. So we can get lots and lots of very simple language out of doing the drama. And it sticks with them. So, of course, you can go over all, mmm, butterscotch. You can go over all this vocabulary. You can offer it to them before you begin. You can go over it afterwards. And you will be surprised at how memorable the words become. The words become what we call stickable, just like the toffee. So I've done some breathing, I've done some body, and I've done some mime with you. English in action. This is what we do when we do drama. Students have to do something to learn something. We teachers are often very, very Talkative. We think we are paid to talk. Stop talking. Let the students do the talking. Let them use their speaking body in the empty space. We have an empty space in the classroom. We don't have a stage. We don't have lighting. We don't have music. We don't have technical helpers. We don't have costumes. We don't have makeup. We don't need anything to do the drama. If you can bring in a few little things, it's okay. Not, not to be, I'm not saying don't bring anything into the classroom, of course, I'm not saying that at all. So let's do some more drama. Are you ready for voice and pronunciation? The last exercise was called toffees. This exercise is called fill the space with your voice. We want the students to become confident and we want them to learn to pronounce by doing it. A lot of teachers go into pronunciation too soon without playing with the sounds. I always play with the sounds a lot first. So please stand up, breathing well, and I want you to raise your, the writing hand that you use. It can be left or right, obviously. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to raise my right hand. I want you to repeat after me. And if you had your mics on, I would love to hear this. I want you to repeat after me, zigger zagger, zigger zagger, oi, 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 again, zigger zagger, zigger zagger, oi, oi, oi. This comes from a football opera that I read many, many years ago. So now I want you to do it according to my sign. Just listening. Okay, the same thing, ready? Steady, go. Stick, stick, stick. Now I want you to do it quickly. Zigger, zagger, zigger, zagger. Oi, oi, oi. Now I want you to do it like a baby. No, I want you to do it like a giant. Zigger, zagger, zigger, zagger. Oi, oi, oi. Then, if we had more time, I would conduct you and I would be able to see if you could change quickly and effortlessly. So, I've done some pronunciation, I've done some voice, and now I'm just going to emphasize that we do drama with everybody. We take everybody from I can't to I can. I can do it. I can do it because my teacher 
has helped me to enjoy it. And now I enjoy it, I want to do it. And the more I do it, the more I learn. It's phonology, you're right. That's part of it, that's part of it. So I can't to I can. And what I've done apart from my two packages is I have put together Krashen's comprehensible input with Swain's comprehensible output. Because what we want the students to be able to do in the end is to speak. To speak with people from all over the world. And now I'm going to do some more with you. Are you ready? Yes, <laughs> eight plus one. Thank you, Salim. Very good. Confidence, ability, desire. Thank you, Bryce. I didn't know you were here. You know a lot about this already. I see you being here. Okay, so let's look at concentration, stirrers, and energizers. This one is called true or false. This one is called true or false. I want you to learn this little chant with me. Right for head, wrong for chin. Right for head, wrong for chin. In the classroom, I would definitely have you standing up, but we'll go, I'll come a bit closer to the screen so you can see me. I'm going to make five statements. And if it's true for you, you put your hand on your head. If it's wrong for you, you put your hand on your chin, put your head down, okay. You are enjoying this webinar. <laughs> I hope you've all got your hands on your head. Today is Thursday. Hands on head. You love eating hamburgers. Mm. Okay, some of you are telling me in the chat box, thank you. You can just write head or chin, head or chin. You love dancing. Mm. You really enjoy listening to Elvis Presley. That really gives away my age, doesn't it? Okay, now you can do this with your students. You can do it on the comprehension passage you're reading. You can do it on any of their likes and dislikes. You can do it for anything at all. And it really gets them moving and thinking and, and, and um, not speaking. This is a listening exercise. It's not a speaking exercise. But then you ask them all to write down five statements. It's not a question, statement. And the statements have to have yes or no, true or false as the answers. And then you get them into pairs. One is the teacher and makes the statement. And the other one is the student and answers with the hands. You can ask them for other movements. They may want to say this for yes and this for no. You can ask them, let them vote. Okay, the more you can do with them, the better. Uh, we, we had included that actually, when I was in China teaching professors at the university, um, we added in this, don't know, don't know. I do things from Clill like, your wrist has 56 bones in it. And lots and lots of English teachers don't know. So they have to do this. I don't know either. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go on. Um, I'm going to do an exercise with you. <laughs> you like the ideas. It really does motivate. It motivates. And it's not just motivating, it's magic. I have seen it work with every kind of student in the world. So I'm going to just tell you momentarily, because it's very short, that there was an ex. Oh. One of my pictures has disappeared. If you can imagine, there's another white coat above the medical kit. This was an experiment done by Adam and Galinsky. 
in 2014, and you can check it out on the internet. It was an experiment where they wanted to test if wearing some item changed your cognition in some way. And this, of course, is what we do in drama when we do use symbols or costumes. And the test was for 200 adults. It was a general knowledge test. It wasn't anything that they had learned. And the people who were dressed up as doctors got higher scores than the people who were dressed up as artists. Now that is absolutely fascinating for me because I believe in drama, we can help our students become fluent by using this idea of enclosed cognition. I've got my witch's hat here. Well, I can't put it on because I've got a screen behind me, but this is a witch's hat. I can show it to you. I think you can see it. This is a witch's hat. This is a wand. And if you give the witch's hat and the wand to a student, what do they do? They go, I will cast a spell on you. Aha, Bracadabra. Everybody here, touch your nose, touch your ear. Everybody here is an elephant. It's natural. Clothes, costumes, symbols, tell your brain what register to use, what, what language to use. And this is the joy of drama. I would like to give you one more idea before I finish. It's called What You Know Joe, that's its title. And you ask your students for some subjects or some characters and you write them on the board or, or on, your, on their laptops or wherever they're using. And you ask somebody, I want you to come out here and I want you to talk without saying, um, for one minute, 60 seconds. I need a timer. Who's gonna be the timer? Okay, Juanita, great, you're gonna be the timer. So, Juanita, get ready. And we're all going to say, what do you know, Joe? In perfect English, what do you, what do you, what do you know, Joe? With a nice uplift at the end. And the person who is it is going to talk for one minute being timed by Juanita, and they're not allowed to say, um. If they say, um, the whole class says, um, and then they have to stop. So here we are with ideas for fluency. In the book, you've got lots more ideas. One in particular that I love is role plays, returning a faulty toaster to the shop, uh, checking in at the airport, social situations, where you need to use the language and you need to work out what you're going to say before you go to the airport. So let's just recap. Right in, some of you are giving me lovely, lovely, flattering um, wishes. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, my classes are always dynamic. <laughs> Can't avoid it. I'm, I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> Uh, write in the box what you're going to take home with you. Write in the box what you're going to do with your students. Don't write the word drama. Tell me an exercise that we've done or tell me something from the components, the witch's hat, breathing exercises, emotional exercises. Okay, good. And clothes cognition using symbols or, or uh, costumes. Fabulous, right for the head. Okay, great. Oh, I'm getting lots and lots of comments. That's fantastic. And now I'm giving you a chance to use your voices. Oh, sorry. 
Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for joining in with me. I'm making a big assumption here because I don't know if you did. I needed you to join in with me because I wanted you to feel what the students feel because they feel something. Okay, any questions, please? <laughs> Thank you, Rosa. Aro Rivero, you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Susan, I think as you can see, people really, really enjoyed your session today. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'd um, like to the I hope they learned something as well. I think you can see from the comments coming back that you've given people <laughs> lots and lots of inspiration and ideas to take to their classes. Many of them saying that they will go tomorrow with a lot more enthusiasm and inspiration for their lessons. I just want to take this opportunity to remind everybody, we have a fantastic offer today. We have a special promotion for Susan's book, a 25% discount. So what? Susan, maybe you'd like to go back to the first slide of your presentation so they can see the front cover of your book. Yeah. And the link will come in the email that you'll receive. All participants will receive an email tomorrow with a link to be able to purchase um, the physical or the ebook, um, the printed book or the ebook with a special discount price. We're getting some uh, questions coming through, so I'll let you deal with those, um, Susan. So you can see okay. something like how to use these techniques with teenagers. So you might like to add something. We have a few minutes. Yeah, so you've got a few questions there. I'll let you yeah. answer those questions. Okay, I've got to try and get back onto presentation. Oh, I can't get back onto presentation mode. I think I've changed my whole Zoom thing by uninstalling and restalling. Okay. Christina's just kindly shared the link for you all to check out if you want to. Oh, somebody says they have your book, great. And she's just shared the link. Thank you, Christina, for people to be able to go and um, see and, more information. And thank you, Rosa, Ro Rivero. Gosh, I've known Ro Rivero for many, many years. Okay. So some of the questions we've had, somebody was asking how to use these techniques with teenagers. You mentioned that you've used across all age groups. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, to tell you the truth, I've been a, a high school teacher for most of my life. I have worked in kindergarten where I've used these techniques. You have to adapt, of course. I have worked in primary. I have worked with adults and... Uh, I can tell you that you can adapt all of these ideas. The main thing is that you learn to be creative. And if you start using these very simple ideas, I've only given you simple ones today. I could go on to talk about full blown drama, but I thought it was a good idea to start with the simple ones, which are in my book. And um, yes, they work with teenagers amazingly well. And what you find is the teenagers really love giving their opinions, expressing themselves, because very often they are told not to express themselves. They're not asked for their opinions because lots of people, I guess, don't really want to know their opinions. Um, they, they think, yeah, um, they think that it allows them a certain freedom and it allows them to develop. It's great. Yes, they do find it strange at the beginning. I'm not going to argue with that at all, Bryce. Uh, they do find it strange, but if you believe in it, you will get them to believe in it as well. I have, I have changed. I've changed schools. Um, I've done. I've worked in five different countries, and I've worked in more than five schools, and so I have received students who have done drama before or total beginners, or total beginners in English language. And it works with everybody, but you have to be creative yourself. I admit that you have to learn to adapt. Take the things from the book and adapt them to your context. 
I can't write for every context. I don't know every context. I can only tell you that I have worked in England, Singapore, Saudi Arabia, Spain, and now Argentina. And I have worked in another 12 countries training teachers to use drama. So I can only tell you what I know. I can only talk from my experience. Japanese students, yes, they're usually very difficult. It's very difficult to get them to accept. I know. I've worked in China since 2005, and I have actually taken classes of students uh, who were very, very silent and very wary at the beginning, but I was able to get them into it, mainly because I get rid of the desks. I get sometimes get rid of the chairs as well. But in this context, I kept the chairs. I got the chairs in a circle. We were working in the gymnasium with five groups of students and each group had about 45 students in it. But my classroom management is so honed down that I can do it. You can get them to accept. I promise you, do you believe me? You change the environment to suit your purpose, of course. You can't do drama if you sit in rows looking at people's backs. That is so abnormal. Indian students like drama very much. I do know that. I taught a lot of Indian students when I, li when I lived and worked in Singapore. Susan, um, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I think you have so much um, <laughs> to share with all today's participants a really lovely lovely um interactive session we will have a full recording of today's session available on our youtube channel we'll also be sending links in the follow-up email to all participants for their certificate of participation and for them to be able to go to your website and find out more about your work and your courses and so on and so forth so I really want to thank you for joining us today it's been a fantastic session I think you can see all the feedback in the chat box. And thank you to everybody for coming along today and joining in. Thank you very much, Susan. Thank you, everybody. We look forward to thank seeing you, you all at our everybody. next week. I'm saving the chat so I can read it afterwards. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.